Good morning, dear friends, and good afternoon from wherever you are joining us for this Mass of the Good Shepherd, where we celebrate Christ as our Shepherd. In this Mass, I will invite us to pray for our Pope, Pope Francis, the Shepherd of God's Church on Earth. We pray for our bishops, pray for our priests, pray especially for priests who have died from this coronavirus at this time. We pray and ask that God may grant them rest and peace. We pray for all of you. We offer Mass for you and for your families. We bring all your petitions and the intentions to the throne of grace and to Almighty God and ask that our good God may hear, bless, and grant everything you are bringing to the Good Shepherd today. We'll also pray for all those who have requested our prayers previously. Pray especially for uh, Joyce Hernandez Khan, who passed away this week. Pray for Eileen Morlion, who passed away, whose feast day is today, or birthday is today. Pray also for Tori, who is battling cancer. Pray and ask that God may grant her healing and recovery. And pray for their families too at this time. Today also is my feast day and the feast of St. James. So we pray for all those who have today for their feast days or their birthdays. Pray that God may bless, that God may watch over, and that God may grant them every good favor at this time. We join our prayers for our patients, our sick people around the world, pray especially for those in critical care, that our good God may be with them and they may feel the shepherding hand of Christ. And pray for our healthcare workers, and all those dedicated to caring for our sick. May God bless their hands, and from their hands and their voices and their words, may healing be transferred to people they provide care for. And you will take the next 30 seconds to please bring your intentions before the altar of God's mercy and grace. Our opening hymn today will be City of God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep, a new day is dawning for all those who weep. The people in darkness have seen a great light. The Lord of our longing has conquered the night. Let us build a city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing. For the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into day. O oh, comfort my people. Make gentle your words, proclaim to my city the day of her birth. O city of gladness, now lift up your voice, proclaim the good tidings that all may rejoice. Let us build a city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing. For the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, we are gathered to celebrate the Good Shepherd Sunday. In, in this Mass, God has invited us to participate where he offers us himself in his word and in his sacrament. We pray that the nourishment that flows from this altar may nourish you, your families, and everyone you care about in spirit, and that the effect may be felt powerfully in your lives and so to prepare ourselves for this mass let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness mm. 
you were sent to heal a contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his eyes and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were caught to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children, and to those far off, whomever the Lord God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 men were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In vendant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in the right path, for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. With your rod and your staff, you give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A second reading is the reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insults. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have all been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep, 
that you have now been returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and my know me. Hallelujah. 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 My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter the sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate, the shepherd of the sheep, the gatekeeper opens it for him. The sheep hear his voice. And the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out his own sheep, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. They do not recognize a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus again said, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate of the sheep. All those who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, for those of you who were tuned in at the first Mass, and uh, we had a glitch, but I hope you were able to participate at this second Mass. Um, today we celebrate the Good Shepherd Sunday. That's the, the normal name we, we know this Sunday to be, the Good Shepherd Sunday. And today I want to reflect on um, why, of all titles, why did the Master choose to use the title of a shepherd as his title of choice? And why did he think that the best metaphor to define us as his followers is as sheep. It is something worth reflecting on, worth thinking about. What about the sheep and what about the shepherd that caught the attention of God in Christ? That he decided that his kingdom will be led by a shepherd and that his members will be sheep. What about this creature? I made him think that. Because when you think historically, you know, grazing has been with us forever. Don't forget, Abel was a shepherd. So, grazing has been with us from the very first family. And that means grazing has been with us for over 10,000, that's from 10,000 BC. Could you imagine how long that is? That's a long time. However, even though shepherds have been the mainstay of our survival by providing us protein and providing us almost everything, sometimes providing us even our own heights and skin for clothing and everything, shepherds have never been 
regarded as a high class group of people. They have always been seen as the very lowly, poor, you know, nomadic people who matter for only little. So it, it baffles me that Jesus would, of all titles, would choose that one. He didn't even choose the zookeeper, which might have maybe sounded more like, yeah, the zookeeper. Where, but Jesus did not want the, his relationship with you and me to be one of a zookeeper and the animals in the zoo. That's why he did not call you one animal in the zoo. But he decided to call you and call the sheep. And he the shepherd. I believe he knew that. Jesus did not even want to be known as a general in the army. Big title and have subordinates where he orders, he issues others and everyone follows. No, that's not the nature of relationship that Jesus wanted to have with you and I. And he said it. says, I came to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. He was a servant leader. And that's what the shepherd does when he carries his sheep on his own shoulders. He does what, he's a servant to the sheep. So the title of general wasn't fitting for the nature of leadership and ministry that Jesus wanted and relationship he wanted to have with you and I. He could have even chosen the title of a CEO. That's a title, that's a good, good title. CEO of this new movement, this new organization, this new company that he was setting up, this new kingdom. He didn't do that. Did not even emphasize his title of king that much. Even when Pharaoh, uh, sorry, uh, Pilate asked him, "Are you a king?" He did not. He knew he was a king, but he did not want to, you know, make that title. You know, um, he hardly called himself a king, hardly ever. He was proud to call himself a shepherd. And I want us to reflect on what about this creature that Jesus thought was so apt for him to define this new movement, this new people. You realize, even today in our own country here, in our, in our people who raise sheep and, and cattle and, and everything, they don't prefer to be, they prefer not to be called shepherds. They don't like that title. It's not been romanticized like the cowboys, like ranchers, like landowners. So people prefer all the other titles. They don't want to be called shepherds, even though they do red sheep. Because that is not a title of choice for people who understand that this is, this is for immigrants, for bedwins. This is for, for lowly people, nomads. But Jesus decided, that's my title of choice. Why? I want us to understand. Now remember, when you read Genesis, you read Genesis chapter 1. You read Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 following, the creation account. When the Father, when God had created everything, He said, He gave all of that to man. He says, I give you dominion over everything that I have created. So God created everything for man, for you, for me. We have dominion over everything that God created. Now, God created you and I for him. He created everything else for us. But God created you and I for him. So Jesus understood fundamentally the nature of relationship God intended that you and I would have with God. It is one of dependence. Because you and I would never live. That's why we were the only creatures that God gave the bread of life directly to. You and I were the only creatures God bred into. That means he shared something from himself directly to us. So he intended for us to depend, forever depend on him for life. Jesus said, because I live, if you, because I live from the, of, because, because, of the, because I live out of the Father, if you believe in me, you will live because of me. So that's the relationship, the nature of relationship. It is our total dependence on God. Now, when you look at the ship, the ship is the only creature that doesn't live in the wild. 
you, you don't have wild sheep. There is nothing like wild sheep. You don't have wild sheep. Think about almost everything else. You have a wild wood. You have wild goats. They live on the, the mountains. Mount, goat, mount, uh, mountain goats. They, live on, they can live on their own. They can thrive on their own. They don't need a shepherd to guide them or to lead them. They don't need that. They can live on their own. You have wild horses. They can just thrive and multiply without anyone taking care of them or feeding them. You have wild dogs. All right. You have wild almost anything. Everything else that is domesticated can live in the wild on its own and survive without the assistance of anyone else. Not you, not me, not in birthing, not in, in, in during birth, nothing. They don't need. The only creature that I know that does not live in the wild is a sheep. It cannot live in the wild. It needs a shepherd. It needs someone to tend it. It needs someone to care for it. It needs someone to help it during delivery. It needs someone to do almost everything. It is dependent wholly on the shepherd. So Jesus, under, Jesus understood that that was what God intended. And when a sheep chooses to not depend on the shepherd, it doesn't last long. It's either, it, it's either preyed upon by you know, um, a lion or some other predator. It doesn't last long. When it walks away from the flock, it doesn't last long. If it's not found quickly, does not last long before it dies. So that's how your relationship and mine is to God. That's why Jesus decided of all creatures to use the sheep. Now the mistake that you and I make, all right, is to think that we can make it without God. That we can make it without God. Not even Adam realized very quickly how difficult life was going to be without God. Even though God still promised to watch over and bless him. But he realized very quickly what it feels like to live without God. And Jesus said, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Cut off from me, you can do nothing. You can do zip. Jesus understood that. The cut off from the shepherd, the sheep can do nothing. Cannot protect itself, cannot feed itself, cannot take care of itself, cannot guarantee its own safety. Jesus understood that our relationship with God is one of total dependence on God for that bread of life. We still depend on God for that bread of life. Now, does it surprise you how we have mistaken across generations each time we we'll decide? To take it ourselves, to lead ourselves, to be our own bosses, to be our own masters, we run ourselves into crisis very, very quickly. We run ourselves into some troubles very, very quickly because we want to do what God did not intend. We cannot. It's impossible. And so today as we celebrate the Good Shepherd, we are reminded that we are like, we, we have this relationship with God like an umbilical cord between you know a child and its mother we cannot survive without god it is not possible and jesus knew that and that's why jesus says he calls himself the shepherd and he calls us sheep and he tells us in any number of places that if we abide with him he says if you abide with me you will live but if you do not you cannot. It's impossible. If you eat my flesh, you will live. If you do not, you cannot. There are any number of places where Jesus wants to define for us what God intended before you came to be, before I came to be, that we are dependent on God. That's something I want, I hope you, will, you remember, that we remember, that people in this world remember. But it doesn't matter. God may be gracious, but we know that God created us for himself. St. Augustine was right. He said, God, you have made us for yourselves, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Yes, the restlessness of human desire is because we're trying to find all other things to fill that, that void, that emptiness. It can only be filled when we get ourselves reconnected to God. We are totally like sheep dependent on the shepherd, God, our God. 
David knew that. That's why in Psalm 23 that we just read, it says, Lord, he, he, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I should. David understood that God was his shepherd, that he was his sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. If he is with me, even if I go down the deep valley, I fear nothing. I don't fear lions. I don't fear, I, don't, I fear nothing. So David understood that with, with, without this shepherd, I am lost. I am nothing. And yet we are trying to act and to live as though we have no need for this shepherd. Jesus used this title for that one reason, to constantly remind us that this is what God intended. If we derail, war on us, there's nothing God can do. If we derail, war on us, the psalmist said that there's not much the Lord can do. So we are invited to think about that relationship with God and to make sure that channel of grace is forever open, not blocked by sin, not blocked by everything else, but it's open for grace. The second thing that I, I, I see with sheep, you know, we I, I grew up, we did, we did, we did, we did raise um, some goats and some sheep growing up in my father's house, you know, but not a lot to learn a lot at all. However, one thing I knew about sheep was that they were very stupid. Everybody knows that. Almost everyone believes that sheep are very, very stupid. However, there's something we can learn from the stupidity of sheep. There's something else that the apostle tells us when you read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. The apostle said, says, we must act as if we are stupid just for us to be wise. As fools just for us to be wise. So I believe the wisdom of this world is not what Jesus understands as wisdom. The wisdom of heaven is different. The wisdom of God is different. The world calls the wisdom of heaven stupidity. But that's the kind of wisdom that the sheep has that God wants us to also learn. See, a lot of creatures, a lot of species have, have been extinct in the course of history. Why have sheep stood the test of every generation from the days of Abel right down to today? And they are still thriving and going on. What do you think explains that? Now, these are the stupidest creatures you could imagine. And yet, they have survived everything. Natural disasters, think about it. We eat them like not nonsense. But they have survived everything. Why is that? That's a lesson for us. That's why Jesus chose to call sheep and call, call us sheep and call himself a shepherd. Now, you realize that the community-based instinct of sheep, they flock together, they hang together, they stay together, they provide for each other. That's how they survive. It is this community-based instinct of survival and self-preservation that has kept them since the 10th BC to this day. And they'll be here for much longer because they have learned the power of the many the power of togetherness, the power of binding, of bonding together, banding together, the power of working together for each other. That's something that this stupid creature teaches us. That's their power. And Jesus said it, make sure he prayed for us to be one. He prayed for that unity, that togetherness. It's everywhere in scripture. It says that you may be one, that the world may recognize that you are my disciple. This sheep teach us. And that's why Jesus decided. He wants his community, his new community, to maintain that together, togetherness. You read, you remember from, uh, from the Bible, we read in Acts chapter 4, verse 32. It said, everybody sold whatever they had. They came together. That was a togetherness. No one lacked anything in that community of the early church because from the abundance of the, 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 the wealthy, everyone else had what they needed. If there is a time that this lesson is essential, it is now. That your survival depends on me and depends on what I do. That my survival depends on you and what you do. That the survival of your sister or your brother depends on what you do. And similarly, the survival of your sister depends on what you do. These sheep are teaching us this vital lesson that 
we depend on each other. I need you, you need me. It's impossible for us to survive for longer if we don't act under this principle, dependence on each other. It was intended by the Almighty God. That's why Jesus, who understood the mind of God, says, I would use this metaphor to define my community. He intends for us to stick together, to work together, to build together, and to thrive together. We cannot do it individually. We cannot do it by ourselves. It is impossible. So we are reminded. Before you think that you are self-sufficient, before I get arrogant and think I'm okay, I can manage myself, I can handle myself, he wants us to remember we depend on one another. Now, humility is another characteristic trait of sheep. They're very humble. They follow. They take lead. Hear what the Bible says. It says, when he has driven out his own, he walks ahead of them and they follow him. They follow him because they do not recognize the voice of stranger. They follow him. They do not recognize the voice of stranger. They follow the master. They follow the lead. Humility is a virtue that is spoken of any number of times. God hates the, hates the arrogant, cannot stand the arrogant or the prideful, and the, he accepts the humble offering of a humble person. Humility is key. And that's something we can also learn from this dumb creature. It follows the master. It follows the shepherd. The question for you and for me is, who are we following? Are we sure we are following the shepherd? Who are we following? In our arrogance, are we following ourselves? Are we leading ourselves? Are we following the shepherd? It's his voice, the voice that leads us. It's his voice, the voice that summons us to action. Or it is our politics, it is our economics, it is our intellect, it is whatever that is that is now leading. What is leading? Are we still attuned to the voice of the shepherd? Do we still recognize his voice? It says the sheep recognize his voice and they follow him. Following, the ability to follow requires that you trust the leader, that you surrender to the leader. That you are okay that this leader will lead me well. And Jesus is that leader. He's a shepherd. Are we following him? Or have we created other idols, demigods as leaders? It's something Jesus wants us to think about. Remember what he said. He said, the greatest of you must be the servant of all. The greatest of you must be the servant of all. That's humble leadership where we are not overtaken by our own, our own self-importance and our own self-regard, that we're able to empty everything for the good of all. That's what Jesus wants from us. And that's what we can learn from the sheep. So these are all vital lessons. Now there's one more lesson that's also important. Sheep are very unpredictable. They are the most unpredictable creature. You see a sheep eating right now. It's there, the car is coming. It's eating until the car is so close before it jumps into the road and wants to. So very often it jumps and it gets killed. Get, get killed, gets knocked down and killed. So the sheep is very unpredictable. Jesus also knew that you and I are very unpredictable. We are so unpredictable that between one minute and the next minute, we can do things that we didn't even think possible. That's how you are. That's how you are. That's how I am. So Jesus also recognizes that quality, and that's a good quality because Hannah Arendt, the German-American philosopher, talks about the, the unpredictability of the human mind as one of the basic tenets of our human condition. So it's a good thing because it is thanks to that one trait that we have been able to create and, and, and the ingenuity that we have been able to do all the things, fly, you know, live on, on, underwater, do almost everything imaginable. It is because we are not fixed. We are not like other creatures that live according to a set pattern of their nature. No, no, we can do the impossible because we are like God. That's what the psalmist said. We are like God. We drew that, all of that life from God. And if, if we recognize 
and can abide by these uh, features or these characteristics that Jesus saw in a sheep. Trust me, my dear friends, we would thrive in this world. We would have our best days ahead of us. If we must recognize first that we are dependent on God. Secondly, that we are dependent on each other. Thirdly, that we are dependent on the leadership of the sheep or the shepherd, which we must follow as humble servants. And finally, that we must tap into our own predictable nature, but put it under the leadership and, and surrender it to Christ to be used to do the impossible and unimaginable things to enhance a better world and a better life for everyone. There's so much we can say. But today as we celebrate this time, I pray that God may touch the mind and heart of every member of this new family to see our true identity. Why Jesus called you a sheep, called me a sheep, and called himself the shepherd. We cannot survive for much longer unless we learn to live by these principles and by this doctrine that Jesus teaches us and taught us. So always, my dear friend, I'd like to end my reflection by reminding you that you are the delight of Almighty God, that God loves you very much. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Born of the Father before the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For all for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in a pontus pilot. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and they seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for our Holy Father, the Pope. Let us pray for our bishops. Pray especially for our own bishop, Timothy Broglie. We pray for his auxiliaries. We pray for our priests, our deacons. Pray for our religious. Pray for all those who have dedicated their lives to the service of Christ imitating the pattern of the Good Shepherd. Pray especially for those we have lost at this time, that God may grant them rest. But we pray too for young men and women, that they may listen to the voice of Christ calling them to a new ministry, that they may come and offer themselves as priests and religious for the Church of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of you. We pray for members of our church, especially your families that are struggling at this time. That our good God, who is forever our shepherd, may lead us to this dark valley, giving us the assurance that we're never alone, and helping us survive the truths and the trails of this dark valley. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our sick. Pray especially for those who are in critical condition. Pray for those who have been so beaten down, dear God, by this coronavirus. Pray for those whose life is just barely, barely hanging on. That the grace of your spirit may be released in full measure to them. That they may feel that power that again breathes life into them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering from all other ailments. Pray for those battling cancers, like Tori, who is battling a very severe form of cancer, that God may grant her healing and health, that God may be with her family and friends. We pray for those who have died. We pray for Joyce Hernandez Khan. We pray for Eileen Morgan. We pray and ask, dear God, that every member of our family that has passed at this time may receive your forgiveness, your mercy, and your grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who, whose businesses are in dire straits right now, oh God. People are not sure what steps to take right now as they await the
the reopening of their businesses. There's so much that is in chaos. We pray, dear God, that your Holy Spirit, the great teacher, may bring them calm and may lead the way forward on the choices to make and the decisions to make and the way that they will proceed going forward. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those without work. Pray for those who have lost jobs. Pray for those who are looking for something to do at this time. Dear God, you are the great provider that you may provide for your children in ways no one else can because we depend so totally on you, O God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I lift up your intentions and your petitions to God and I ask that God may hear them, that God may accept them, that God in return may bless them for you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Be gracious to us, O oh God. Hear this consent we have, we have raised before you. Listen to all the others that are in the silence of our hearts. Accept them, dear God. And please, please bless and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. I am the Holy Vine. Which God my Father tends, each branch to yield its fruit, most with divine being. Each fruit, full branch it prunes with care, to make it yield abundant fruit. I am the holy vine, and you, my branches are. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It shall become a bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters, pray, my brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice on my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may always find delight in this Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to Lord you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to plead our cause. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more. The lamb was slain who now lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you and drink from it for this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Joyce and Eileen, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant to Lord that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and Mark and saints, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the water our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. My dear friends, from my heart to you and your families, may the peace of Christ, that is above all understanding, all imagination, be with you, abide with you and your families. Amen. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold our Savior, the Good Shepherd. He takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word on my soul. May the, may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Dear Lord, you are the good shepherd. We beg you today that your people, wherever they are right now and are worshiping you, who are unable to receive you, to receive the nourishment that you offer physically. That you, the Good Shepherd, may nonetheless visit with them in their homes, visit with them in their privacy, and bless them, and nourish them, and enrich them, and grant them every good grace to be what we have called us to be. For we ask all of this through Christ our Lord.
for <clears throat> for our meditation here we're going to sing a song to our blessed mother the merry gentlewoman Hail Mary full of grace the Lord is with you Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and all the hour of our death. Amen. Gentle woman, quiet light, morning star so strong and bright. Gentle mother, peaceful God, teach us wisdom, teach us love. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by your precious blood. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment again to express my thanks to all of you who were able to rejoin us at this Mass. I pray for, continue to pray for all of you and also ask your prayers at this time. Like I said, I do need you. I do need you. You need me. We need each other. You need your sister. You need your brother. You need every member of this human family. We need each other. And I hope that that lesson is one we will take very, very seriously. So always I like to end everything I say by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very, very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing the summons for our closing hymn. Will you come and follow me if I did call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you alone? Will you let the blind see if I did call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you?